Uh, I'm Derek Olds once again uh, here in Los Angeles, California. Um, we're going to keep talking about Melodyne 5 and the wonders of the program. Um, in the other session we did, we talked about tips and tricks and things like that based on some uh, a session that I'm working on. Uh, now we're actually going to spend the, the next 30 minutes talking about actually tuning a vocal project. Um, we're going to take some vocals I, I tracked earlier and, uh, you know, just start working through it. Um, you'll find as you use Melodyne more and more that there's a certain order of operations that you can do. And if you stick to it, you're going to get much more professional results. Um, and that's really what we're going to be going through one by one today. Um, if you're not doing it in the correct order, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot half the time by cutting things up before you time them and this and that. It's It can it can get really complicated really quick. So <clears throat> there's also a lot of new things in the latest version of Melodyne that have sped me up personally by 35, 40% on every project. It's awesome. I'm actually getting more sleep now, which, which is very rare. Um, so I'll show you some of those tricks and things like that. So real quick, uh, let's just listen to the project we're going to be working on here. Uh, it's called My Only. It's a song I've been uh, finishing up. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> I tracked a few vocals on the on the chorus and also on the verse here. So let's start tuning these vocals. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just bring up the list of the order of operations I'm, I'm talking about. Um, this is kind of a working list uh, we've got going on. But <clears throat> in order, first thing we're going to do is cut out the fat, just, you know, all the just space in between notes, things that you just don't need, the fat, right? Um, and then we'll go into note assignment mode tweaks. That's if Melodyne incorrectly assigns certain um, syllables or certain notes to maybe the wrong octave, which happens sometimes. It's super complicated what it's doing. You can go in and visually change it without changing the pitch so it looks right and, and it's a lot easier to work with. Then next we'll talk about note separation tweaks. That's where if you have something like a... Uh, that's two notes, but sometimes it's, it puts it in one blob because it, um, it it analyzes that way. So you can cut it up and make it reanalyze as two notes. So we'll be doing that. Uh, tone and sibilance detection tweaks. One of the most amazing things about the new Melodyne algorithm is that it's it splits out your um, sibilance or your S's and T's and breaths and ch's and things like that. It, it processes those differently than tonal information, the rest of, of the vocal. So it's really great. You could even, you know, separate them out into two tracks and have just the sibilance on one track and just the tonal stuff on another track, especially if you have, if you're working on something that has a lot of problems from a bad tracking session or um, not, not that great of a mic. So um, we'll be talking about that and showing you that. Also timing. Nothing is better than Melodyne when it comes to stretching time-wise and, and putting things in the pocket, you can really get, it's like surgery. I always, we, we always talk about, you know, um, Melodyne being something like surgery and maybe like an auto-tune on auto mode, um, being more like maybe uh, the triage. They're both really needed, emergency room versus surgery, but Melodyne really lets you zoom in and really get really uh, exact with it. So we'll talk about that, especially with timing. Um, <clears throat> then we're gonna tune the vocal. That includes putting the the pitches of each note, maybe on average at the center of the note, but still letting it fluctuate around. Um, pitch drift and modulation, we'll talk about that. That's like vibrato and, and, and drifting pitch. And then also slopes between notes. If you have multiple notes, it's how fast you wanna go from one note to the other. You can make it sound super uh, you know, robotic if you want or superhuman, superhuman. 
like the rest of us. Um, form and adjustments, that's going to be the ear, the timbre of the vocal. If you make big adjustments, a lot of times you have to compensate by changing the timbre. Um, and we'll talk about that. And then lastly, volume edits with amplitude and dynamics and things like that. So let's get into this. This first vocal, um, here was the original one from the record, a little bit of it. Heard it recently. Did she know that and um, I tracked a new vocal. I'm going to claim that I tried to sing a little bad, so we have more to fix. We're just going to say that. Out. We're just going to say that. But um, here we go. So let's listen to what we're going to be working on here a little bit. Recently, does she know that she will never be alone again? Just know that. Cool. So <clears throat> let's start going through this. First thing I'm going to do is bring up Melodyne on this track. So I'm actually going to bring Melodyne on this track, then also on the lead from the record, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, cool. So what's great is in the new versions of Melodyne, um, you can open one instance. Like you can see, I even have Melodyne on a, on a synth over here, I believe. Let's see, on this synth, great. And if I open even this one, I can see the vocals I just put in here. If I push play once, it's going to analyze everything automatically. You don't have to play through the whole thing anymore, which is a big si uh, time saver. So it goes through and, and analyzes it for you. I'm actually going to remove Melodyne from these synths since we're not working with them right now. Okay, cool. So let's go back to these vocals. So I'm going to open it up. <clears throat> we have to talk a little bit about, okay, so you can see it went in on the old vocal and it, it analyzed it as um, polyphonic. And that's because I had actually a double. So it it's detecting multiple notes and that's pretty amazing to figure that out. But I'm going to say select all on the the uh, old vocal, and then I'm going to re-detect it just as melodic. So it's going to find a monophonic detection. You know, that's what we usually use for, you know, dry vocals, raw vocals. Boom. So it's just giving us one blob for, for each one. Make it a little bigger here. Okay. And then let's see how it did on our new vocal. Let's go over here. Great. So it, it knew that was monophonic because it didn't have reverb or anything. Has she heard it? Recently, does she okay? Cool. So, up here at the top left, this is really important to know about Melodyne. Um, if it's in orange, you're in edit, edit notes mode. If it's in gray, it's show notes for reference. So, if it's in orange, you can hear it and touch it and move it. You know, I can move this around. It's gonna be crazy. Heard? That's awesome when that happens, especially in front of a client. Don't do that, right? Um, okay, so another thing to know about is up here. If you're all the way to the left, all you see is the orange notes, or all you hear is the orange notes. Now, when you go gray, you can hear it, but you can't touch it. You see, I'm trying to grab this, I can't grab it. And as you go towards the center, once you hit the center, you're hearing evenly orange and gray notes. So let's see. Has she heard it? Great. I'm gonna also make maybe. Let's do this. Let's play hear them both. Has she heard it recently? So they're pretty close, but we can definitely tighten this up a little bit. Um, so let's go in. So I'm going to just use the one from the record as a timing reference and maybe a pitch reference. So first things first, like we talked about, is just cutting the fat. I'm just going to go in here and remove. Sometimes, like let's say I just removed the beginning of that, it's just noise. I might have to go to the note separation tool and just pull it out a little bit if I want to have a little bit more of a um, pre-roll there. I don't see any other fat. I see some right here maybe. So. Check this out. This is a breath, I think. Let's see. We're just going to hear this one now. Let's... There's a little breath. Maybe I want to keep that later. I don't know. So I'm just going to just remove. Um, I'm going to pull this back out and just make sure I have some of the breath. But it's nice to, you know, get rid of any of that fat. And then at the end, I bet there's a little bit. Yeah, cool there. And maybe I'll pull it out a little bit. Away. Cool. Sounds great. Okay, so next we're going to go into note assignment mode. Tweaks. So... Melodyne's really great at assigning notes, but you can see, let's see if we can find anywhere that it, it missed. Yeah, here we go. So when it was analyzing here, it sees this note. And because of the gravel in my, in my throat there, it 
predicted this as a D sharp, but an octave down from what it should be. The problem is if I move this up, it's gonna sound crazy. Okay, so I can go into what's called note assignment mode up here, right? And it's right here, boom, hit that. And then I can go and I can move this visually without actually changing the pitch. So if I get it in, if I get it anywhere close, it's gonna snap to the octave above. Same with this one over here. Let me just snap it. Boom. Now let me go back to um, the regular mode, which is called track mode. And it looks great and uh, it sounds the same. So that might happen here and there. It's it's definitely worth as you clean up all the fat. Make sure you look out for notes that are like an octave above or below, and you can just fix those visually so it's it's a better process throughout. <clears throat> okay, now, note separation tweaks. So there's probably going to be many times in most vocals where it won't detect certain scoops as a se separate note, or maybe if you're like, da -da 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 -da, maybe it'll miss one of those. Who knows? So we can go in with our split tool. I'm just two finger clicking on my laptop or right click to bring up my tools here or the same ones up here. So I'm gonna go to my note separation tool, I mean, and has she heard, has she heard? That's three notes. I'm gonna cut this one right here. You'll see that it's now reanalyzing. Basically what Melanine does per blob. So let's say from here to here, this is one blob. There's a pitch line. That's the exact pitch that you're hearing. So it's, it's moving along with the pitch. Where it puts the center of the blob, you see this, this blob is a little sharp above D sharp on average. The center of the blob is the average of the whole pitch line throughout the whole blob. So what that means, a, a way to really work fast in Melodyne, if I just go to my normal tool and double click, it's gonna put the average of the whole blob at the center of the note. In, in pop music, usually most singers are, are going at least, even if they're, doing vibrato and acrobatics within a note, they want the average of the note usually to be around center. So um, some people really like to start with things centered. It's up to you. You can use this as heavy handed as you want or as light as you want. It's, it's a creative decision um, per artist really. So cool. So, okay, so that looks like two notes. Here, here's recent reason. Cool, I'm gonna split that. What I find is if there's a slope like this, if there's two notes, usually not right at the top, but a little bit, maybe 20, 25% near the top is a good place to cut in a scoop. You know, you can kind of cut anywhere, but what really matters is this note. How we got there is not nearly as important. There's some genres like country music that you don't really want to mess with those scoops because if you do, then it's like not country anymore. <laughs> so... Let's keep going a little bit more. So recently, recently, so that's two notes, and this looks like one. That she will, and then cool. That's that's actually two. So I want to split she it up. She will never, be, never, will never. Oh, even though I got now, I'm gonna treat that as two notes. Why not? Let's see. Alone. Here's an alone. So maybe I'll cut it right there. Boom. Again. Cool. Those are all ones. This scoop, no. I'm gonna leave it. Uh, Melodyne's new algorithm knows not to mess with this scoop, even if you tune the whole thing. No. It's a big change in the new Melodyne and it's sped me up again tremendously to be able to do that kind of stuff. It's it's doing some of the work for you now. Wait. Cool, so wait. there we go. And then boom, let's see anything Is else. It long? Is that looks like another note, great. Take for you to find your way. Cool. All right, so I've separated out all the note adjustments. Now, tonal versus sibilance detection. This is awesome. So, in the new Melodyne, if you look at these, it's take for you to find your way. So, anything that's not tonal, so that's sibilance information, S's, T's, breaths, ch's, things like that they have these vertical lines in them. That means that Melanine's not gonna touch them. If I move this note, wherever I wanna move, if I wanna move this note, it's not gonna try and pitch S's. That was a big problem before. We used to have to literally go in and cut out every single S and T in Melodyne. It took forever. That's what's sped you know everyone up so much. 
Another really cool thing is if you stretch a node, I'm gonna hold down option towards the edge of any blob and you can stretch. You see it's not stretching the S's. Or uh, I think this is, that's a T. It's not stretching that because even if I say, may take or may take, the, the T is pretty much the same amount. We don't ex, you know, elongate our S's and T's just because we're elongating a note as humans usually. So Mel and I knows that, so it's it's keeping that away. There's ways to override that if you need to also. Okay, so one, this mic's a little bit, you know, S-y. Has she heard it recently? Oh, that sounds pretty good, actually. Sounds really good. But let's say we want, we can go into each note and adjust it or do it globally. So let's say we just want to like DS the whole thing a little bit. We have a really bright mic. Maybe we need to do the whole thing. We can command all, select all, and then go up here to this new sibilance balance tool. And you'll see if you pull down, it removes the sibilance stuff. So let's hear it. Has she heard it? Or if you go up, it leaves just the sibilance. Super powerful. It's great to maybe even isolate those if you really need to do surgery. So, but in our case, maybe we'll just go and just bring all the S's and T's and stuff, sibling stuff a little bit down. So we just did that. Has she heard recently? Does she know? This will allow it. What I find is in Melodyne, I like to DS a little too much because then once I get into Pro Tools or Logic, whatever I'm, Studio One, whatever I'm mixing in, once you start compressing and exciting a vocal, we modern day, we compress the heck out of a vocal, S's and T's and stuff come up in volume. So if you Melodyne the raw and have it a little too much, once you throw those that compression on, it'll be in that sweet spot and you can learn to really edit very quickly that way. Things get more uh, standardized. So we fixed some of the S. You could also just go in and say, you know what? This one note, know that she maybe that sh should be lower. There, we can just do that she You can see it's just adjusting the relative um, uh, difference between siblings versus tonal. So cool, we did that. Now let's get into timing adjustments. Melodyne, again, is king and queen to me at, at time adjustments. Everyone knows their alg this algorithm sounds as good, if not better, than anything in the world. So what you can do, the easiest way to time things, there's a bunch of timing tools in, in Melodyne, but really just if you go to the edge of a blob, you can hold down Option or Alt, I believe, on Windows, and you can time stretch. Has she heard it? So you can do magic with this obviously um there's nothing that ruins a vocal performance more than timing i think you know it's even more important than pitch unless it's really bad but timing if you've got somebody that's not in the pocket it just doesn't feel pro if if you put them in the pocket it can just bring that vocal to life and the whole record really starts to move people start moving together so let's uh let's do some timing now i'm going to use the lead vocal from the studio as a reference and i can because I can just put it in, in uh, gray, I literally can just visually let that show me what I'm looking at. So I'm even gonna maybe hear both of them as I do it. Has she heard? So I feel like maybe I'm rushing a little there and rushing there. I can just select blobs and hold down option on the edge. Has she heard it? Okay, cool. I think maybe a little faster on this guy. Let's just kind of visualize this. I'm just nudging it over, you know, massaging it. It feels like giving a little, you know, massage to the audio here. So I think this one needs to be a little sooner. Has so. she heard it recently? Does she know that she will never be? Okay, so like this never seems behind. So. She will never. Cool. So maybe I'll go in and just move all of these over a little bit and maybe nudge this guy because that's the worst one. She will never be. That sounds a lot better. Does she know that she will never be alone? Cool, and then we're a little late on the verb E here. Okay, cool, boom. We're rocking away now, here we go. Oh, that she will never be alone. So you see how tight I'm getting that timing. It doesn't sound fake, just sounds like I sang it that way. And uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, you wouldn't know now. So anyways, all right, so boom. Let's do this one. Again. All right, let's do the rest real quick. Just know that pretty good for as long as it may take for you okay timing is pretty good now 
Anything else blaring out? No. Let's see here. Long is it? I think long as it could be a little better. Long is it? Me take for you. And then the here is definitely rushing a little bit or behind. It looks like me take for you. Okay. Me take for you to find your way. Nice. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we did timing. Great. Boom. So now we actually get into the tuning of the whole thing. All right. Okay, let's get back to these notes here. Okay, so we, we got to number five, the timing. Now let's tune. So tuning, I've split this up into three different uh, things, but you can really do this all in one pass, right? So we're going to talk about putting all the notes in the center or wherever you think the average should be. Then we're going to talk about vibrato and pitch drift and then slopes of between notes. So let's go back to this Melodyne instance here. Okay, so first things first. If you just take the pointer tool here, what do they call it? The main tool, officially, and double click on notes, you can put everything, all of the averages of all the pitch per blob are put to the center. Can be a good place to start. You can do this globally. If I command all, I can also go to my pitch uh, macro here. I can say how close to the center they all should be. You see, some of these notes are going to the wrong place because I was too far off and they're snapping to the wrong note. Um, that's something we can fix later or now. Um, I'm going to just do it note by note here. So I'm just going to go and, and tune as we go. So let's see here. Has she heard? So, and I'm also going to get rid of the, the reference now. A bit. Has she heard? Has she heard? That's not too bad. Has she heard? Now there's, you can see how this is like tilted down. Let's talk about, we've got our pitch tool, but then we also have our pitch modulation tool. Pitch modulation is vibrato. Ah, right? When the pitch is going up and down, right around the center, but it's fluctuating, it's modulating up and down. So... Great singers usually use vibrato for a lot of expression, a lot of emotional delivery. So you don't, I personally rarely like to touch people's vibrato unless it's like, you know, something really crazy, but I usually like to leave that alone. In this case, for instance, if I, if I, first of all, I could take all and let's say I take all the, all the vibrato down here. Let me get back to modulation. You can literally make this sound like a robot. Has she heard it recently? Right? Um, we don't want to do that. I don't really like to touch vibrato, but pitch drift is something that really sets Melodyne apart. It means that if I'm like, ah, I can take that tail and bring it up globally, and it kind of just massages the whole thing to be still acrobatic and still emotional, but more around the center. So, for instance, in this one, I'm on pitch drift. I can just make the whole thing kind of level out a little bit here. This one, see how it's like just tilting. I'm not really messing it up too much. I'm just giving it a little bit of help. So let's hear how this sounds. Has she heard it? It's pretty good there. Okay, let's keep going. So that one snapped right. I'm just double clicking. I can do multiple at a time too. I can double click here with mul uh, many of them. Let's see how this sounds. Heard it. Cool, I like this. I do still feel like I can pitch drift it a little bit more. Okay, let's pitch drift. Boom. Okay, cool. And then if you there's another concept. It's called, I call it slopes, slopes between notes. So if you just go to the main tool, you get these yellow or orange slopes here. This is how quickly you're going to transition from one note to the next. If it's super straight up, that's going to sound like a robot. The more you tilt it and you can make it smoother. So that also applies between two notes that are next to each other. I didn't know this for years, but this has really helped me out lately. You can bring that thing up and smooth out even the transition between two of the same note. Super valuable. Let's hear has it. she heard it recently? Does she know? Re recently. And I think I need to time this a little more. It seems like the recently. recently there, that sounds better. Great. And we're gonna keep going. We could we could mess with this a little bit, a little on the transition, maybe some slope there. And as we go through, I'm gonna do something more global. Let me double click on all these and let's see where we get. Go back to my pitch tool. Boom. All right, let's hear and see. Does she know? 
This is the she. I, let me pitch drift that down and maybe make the slope a little better. Does she know that she will never? Oh, that's. Oh. Oh. Cool. So we're just kind of massaging things around here. I would like to maybe get rid of that a little bit and definitely do some drift. Cool. Does she know that she will never be? No. Will never. Cool. Let me maybe I'm gonna nudge this down a little bit just to help it out. She will never be alone. Nice. Okay, that's something better. Don't be afraid to like if it's not in the center and you don't want to fix it that much, you can always just nudge it down. I'm just holding down option that takes it off the grid. Instead of it snapping, if I hold down option, it's an even one. So sometimes you'll just look and be like, in this case, I'd probably cut this up. And then treat these as two separate ones and then smooth out the transition. You will never be Sounds a little bit better. We we could work on it more. You will never be alone. But you can see how you can you can just keep working until it sounds great. Um it's just uh sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Never be alone. Cool. Okay, so let's uh let's talk a little bit about these other ones too. So we talked about pitch center, pitch drift, modulation, slopes, cool. Now, if you need to move something like drastically, Never like be alone. me, Never be alone. cool. Let's say we were just doing this. Not gonna be natural, but just in case. Never be alone. You see, the higher we take a note, the more it kind of sounds like a little Mickey Mousey. So that's a lot to do with formant and timbre. So that's the ear of the sound, right? We have a thing called a formant tool that if we take it up. We can make it sound. Let me take it all up just to show you, and it's always kind of fun too. Let's hear it. You will never be alone. Cool. Um, or if we take it down, we can make it sound super dark and maybe uh, demonic. You will never be alone. Nice. Dubsteppers love that, right? Okay, so if I move this note like, you know, five half, half steps up, so <clears throat> if I do that, it's going to go up a little in pitch, so you can help it out a little bit by just taking the formant down a little and make it happen. You will never be alone. Cool, and then we, we would have to do a little work on these transitions and stuff, but let's say we're trying to make a, a, a harmony with this. So, and you know, it's nice to keep timbre in, in, in your mind so you don't end up sounding uh, too unnatural. Never be alone. Sounds better. So, okay, cool. So you might want to go through the whole thing thinking about that if you made a lot of big changes. If not, then maybe you don't even have to go through that. Um, there's also uh, volume edits. So that's, that's going to be one more pass, really just to help the mixing engineer out. Like, for instance, I can see that this note is definitely too loud. I can go to my amplitude tool. Just maybe take these two, oh, take them down a little bit. Recently, does she know that she now it sounds way better. Now, in the studio... Has she heard... So definitely these might be a little loud too. In the studio, or when you're mixing, uh, your compressors are gonna have to work really, really hard if you've got notes that are really loud and really soft and you're gonna have to use compression or clip gain. Why not just do it right here? You have it, you can see it, it's so easy. The height of each blob, it's not the volume, it's the amplitude, it's the energy of the blob. So if all the blobs are around the same height, you're gonna end up with a a much more consistent vocal, then your compressors can be used for what they need, should be used for, just kind of keep it in a box and keep it um, steady instead of fixing problems. So we would go through the whole thing. Um, that also includes, so let's see. Okay. So this one I definitely think is too loud. And then as we get into these top notes, no, that, I'd probably no. go to each one of these and give it a little love ah. to help it out a little bit. Ah. So you can see by the end, by the time, the vocal's out of Melodyne. It's been DS'd, it's been tuned, it's been timed. Um, it's been somewhat, uh, you know, dynamic range has been fixed, like compression, your foreman has been worked on. So um, by the time it, it hit Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, whatever you're mixing in, the, it already sounds pretty awesome. And then most likely a preset chain will get you 80% in your mix and you keep, keep going. So use Melodyne for that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it was kind of quick. Let me put this up again. If you want to maybe take a screenshot of this, um, this is definitely an order that's worked for me for years. So um, try it out and enjoy the rest of Imsta 2021.
Thanks so much. I'm Derek Olds. I'll see you guys again.